Hi, this is Jenny with Gunter Creative. I've been working for a while now on a book cradle so you can punch the holes in your signatures easily. Um, I think I finally got it. I went through lots of trial and error on the file, but now it's ready and I want to show you how I put it together. So I've got my trusty orange hammer that I found in the garage a long time ago and it never made it back. Um, this file has two pieces like this for the um, front, two pieces like this for the sides, and two pieces like this for the top, which will sit like this at an angle. Okay, here we go. I think first it would be good to put the front and back on the side like this. So it slots in easily there. Now let's put the other side. Usually it's easier to lay down the side with the slot and put the little tenon in there from above. And if you need to, you can use your hammer. Make sure it gets in there good. Okay. Now that we've got four sides, we'll, three sides, sorry, we'll put in the final side here. This should be made out of eighth inch plywood. Okay, now I'm gonna set it up like this. Hammer it in one more time. Now the tops, um, they're the same distance from the edge on both ends, so it doesn't matter which way you put it in. Set it on top of your slots. Hammer it in. You want it nice and tight. And I'm going to have another video that will show you how to easily edit your slots and test the sizes of the slots and the tenons before you cut the whole thing and waste a lot of material like I did. Okay, so there's the whole thing. Now I'll show you how to punch holes in your signatures for bookmaking. Okay. Here is the book cradle we just put together. One thing I forgot to mention is with the file, I will include this little piece so that you can just cut just that much and make sure that the slot fits in there snugly, but not too snug. Um, hopefully you should be able to take this apart and store it flat, put it back together when you need it. Um, so if it doesn't fit snugly, I'm going to show you in a minute how to edit the slots so that they, um, they fit just right. And then you can try this little test piece again and again until you get it just right. And then edit all the slots on the main file. Okay. So punching the holes using your book cradle. I have all this extra paper because my I need a new printer and my printer um, jams about every time I try to print something. And then you can't put that paper back in because it's, it's going to jam again if you try. Okay, so eight and a half by 11, I just uh, fold in half there, use your bone folder or your Sharpie to burnish it down and make it your fold nice and crisp. Open your signature, which is a grouping of sheets of paper we call a signature. Open it up and you can set it right down in your book cradle. This, um, when I get my files up for the long stitch book, I will also include this that you can print out. And it has your six holes that you need that goes with the file for the long stitch book that we'll be making out of leather. 
So you just print this out and um, cut it on the lines that are provided and you will put it down in the fold of your signature and with this nifty book cradle that we made you it'll make it easy to punch your holes with an awl or you can punch them with the needle if that's all you've got and that's all there is to it just take each signature on its own and fold it like I folded, set it in your book cradle, set your template down on top of it, and punch the holes. That's it. Okay, so here we are in Illustrator. I've got my book cradle 1 8 inch ply EPS opened. Um, I would encourage you to always make edits to the EPS if you can. When I was working on my Living Hinge book file, some weird things started happening when I made edits to the SVG files. So when I started making edits to the EPS and the EPS only and then saving out to SVG when I was done, um, those problems went away. So I'm trying now to always make edits to my EPS. So over here we've got our little test piece. Um, I've got a slot and a tab that's the same size as all of these out here and the rest of it. So cut this first, and that only. You won't waste much um, material that way. If it fits, great. You can print the rest of it with the same settings. Um, if it's too tight or too loose, then come right here on just the slot. You won't need to make any edits, hopefully, to the tenon part. We're just gonna make edits to the slot. You can see over here that my slots tend to be about 0.11 inches um, depending on how loose or how tight it came out for you um, you'll want to add or subtract I, I would think um, instead of changing if it's too loose I would change this to point oh I'm sorry point one zero Five. If it's too loose, that's going to make it narrower. And always make sure in Illustrator that you have this reference point to the middle. That way it'll take off that minuscule amount from both sides instead of just one side. If, if we had it set here, then it would just take it off from this side when you make it smaller. So um, you also want to make sure, and I just did it, that you don't have your um, little lock set here because what's that, what that is going to do is change your height as well. We only want to change the width. So take that off and if your slots were too loose but just a little bit too loose, you know, do it in very small increments because it, it makes a difference. It makes a big difference, the small increments. Once you have your test um, slot to the right size, then I would recommend deleting one of each of these pieces because they're just duplicates. Well, actually, you don't have to do that one because we're not changing this one. This just has tenons on it. These are the two we're going to change. Um, I have these grouped, so in Illustrator, all you have to do is double click double click to get down to a piece that's in the group make sure you have this set to center and then change your value to whatever value you came up with on your test and you're going to do that to all of these and change all of those make sure you have this set to center and you're not you don't want to maintain your width or height proportions you just want to make it narrower not shorter so you'll change all of those on that piece. You'll change, double click to get down here, change this one, go over here and change this one. And then all you'll have to do either in this file or even in your laser software, duplicate the top again, duplicate the side here, maybe rotate it because that'll make it fit better. 
and then you're going to want to save as um, an SVG or whatever format you use for your laser. Um, with the Glowforge, I tend to use SVG. Save. And then another tip for SVG files, probably doesn't matter on one this simple, but if you're working on something that's really complex or really small fonts or something like that, always make sure your decimal places is more than one because that's another thing I found out when I was making really small text and engraving things that were tiny. Um, this is going to make a difference. I always put that up to five just to make sure it's as precise as possible even though like I said probably on this one it doesn't really matter. And then you'll you'll save it and you'll be ready to go. Let me know if you have any more questions. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to another maker that has some great videos on some of the other software. Um, I think the general instructions will be the same. You'll just be making edits to the slots in this file.